Well, a very warm Vets Clinic wait, welcome to Kate Bendix. Just introduce yourself to us about um, you know, who you are and your Itchy Dog website. Well, I started Itchy Dog, my Itchy Dog, about three years ago, and I wanted to build a company that sold natural products that work for dogs with skin problems. And is that because you'd had experience of a dog with an itchy skin? Or? I had, we have a, a Bedlington Terrier called Ronnie who has, who gets severe flea allergies. Mm. Uh, and we had a cat as well who overgrooms and overgrooms and just pulls all her fur out. And did you get frustrated by sort of going to the vet for sort of the mainstream treatment? Essentially, yeah. And also Ronnie's a very nervous dog. Getting him to the vets is a real trial. And uh, yeah, we had antibiotics and steroids and mm. various washes and it just wasn't doing it. And we needed something that treated him very quickly when he got, if, he, if he got bitten. And did you then explore various alternative therapies? Yeah. And, then, and they worked for you? Yeah, well I also explored mm. various natural things and I was looking for better food that was out there and, and you just couldn't find it all in one place. Mm. You know, we were looking for really healthy treats. And that's why you set up the website to really, yeah. for people who are in that position, they've got a dog or a cat who's, I mean, is it dogs actually? Yeah, it's, it's, the it's the the, there is it? a little yeah. colourful, yeah, yeah, my itchy cat, but mostly yeah. it's for dogs. Right, okay, so people with dogs who are out there got a kind of, serious itchy dog problem that isn't just a question of fleas it's a more yeah. probably we're really talking about allergies aren't we so yeah. skin allergies and there's advice on there and then you sell the products to try and help and yeah there's kind of products you've got on there so when I mean, you've got some of them here um just talk us through what you've we've got, got um billionomates which is a natural flea treatment okay i mean i'm gonna <laughs> be here with my cynical scientific yep. vet head on and go um you know how does that work and is, is there any kind of it's just got seaweed fenugreek mint and lemon bark and neem. Yeah, and neem. neem. And neem is the big ingredient in there. Okay. And what is neem? Neem is a vegetable, a vegetable oil. It, the best stuff comes from India. It smells. There's a pot of neem there. If you want to have a quick whiff of that, it doesn't smell the best. Oh, that's quite nice. Actually. See, people either love it or hate it. I like that. Yeah. yeah, I don't um, like it. And this, I mean, this is like the <laughs> idea theory of putting garlic in food and stuff. That the, the fleas just all go, oh, don't like that. It's neem is a very good anti-parasitic it's good for it's kind of got antibiotic properties to it but it's if they are not antibiotics i'm not saying they no. are i'm not saying they're a replacement but they're very good for it so this calming you, you things know, down. You, this would be something so someone who perhaps reacts to a traditional flea treatment yeah you put this in the food and, and yeah. that'll help or for some for a dog that doesn't actually uh, you know just become immune after they've used the same one all the time so they might say well I, i'm not going to go into another conventional one but i'm going to try this one and they give it a go and it either works or it doesn't, or it doesn't. Um, and this, it does. this in here is a um, resist it's herbal supplement boost the natural immune system it's just pure echinacea and okay. in the same way that it can help with us especially if you've got um it, i mean itchiness can be environmental allergies as mm. we said it can be parasitic it can be diet and mm. some dogs as well just get itchy skin where they're run down and if they've had long-term illness if they've had quite a lot of long-term drug use then it just gets them mm. back up to but I think there's definitely something to be said for that I mean we <coughs> in the vet's kitchen foods try and use natural added ingredients um, you know things like prebiotics and glucose yeah. and stuff and the, the border the, the, I suppose the boundary between what is a conventional and what is a natural doesn't have to exist really because a lot of no. conventional treatments either come originally from natural products or are natural products and some of them are synthesized analogues of a natural product so there isn't necessarily a boundary between the two is there I mean it's no not necessarily and I think convention the word conventional and the word natural are just so hackneyed they're just mm. overused words that that becomes an issue in itself just understanding that they actually can and both work work quite well yeah and your theory is really about that holistic horrible word that it is but it's, yeah. it's, it's looking at using I suppose all appropriate forms of treatment and yeah. looking at the dog as a whole so if they've got an itchy skin it might actually be a problem with their diet or it might be a problem with their stress or their environment yep. or their immune system exactly that exactly which is that. great um so if we just move it on because we, we put this on <coughs> facebook uh, a few days ago we've had some very interesting comments back from people i suppose on this whole conventional versus natural remedy so not specifically on skin um, and it'd be interesting to, to get your viewpoints on these. So, um, and Julie has said one of the first ones, um, which I think we both agree with, most modern medicines are derived from plants, so I think the use of both can be very effective if yep. used properly, yeah. Um, Sarah's asked about, do any of you guys use colloidal silver for poorly pet? We talked about this, and, and I mean, silver is, is an antibacterial, it's a, it's a recognised, it has antibacterial properties. Um, it's not something I use here in the surgery. Yeah. Is it something you've come across? Or? Well, yeah, we do sell 
we, I do sell one product, a colloidal silver product from a company called Lintbells, who make very, very effective things. Mm. And it's fantastic for cleaning out ears. Mm. And I use it on yeah. our, my cat Dave, has got one really gunky ear. And yeah. it's oddly satisfying. <laughs> I mean, Louise has said that she uses that for a dog. Um, and she, she also uses a lot of homeopathy. Um, we're going to talk about homeopathy in a minute. Um, Linda has said that I don't think one approach has to be an expense for the other, which I think we're all agreed on. Yeah. I mean, she said she uses um, both, she uses simple remedies such as arnica for bruising um, and other things, fenugreek, garlic, which I, you know, I'm absolutely in favour of. I think they can work really well. Um, but there are times when traditional medicine um, is paramount to importance, and I absolutely agree. And I would say things like vaccinations, you know, treating treating really acute diseases, you yeah. don't want to rely, if you've got cancer in a dog, you don't want to rely on possibly will a herbal medicine. No, and I've uh, had people phone, I've had customers phone before and say, my dog has cancer, can you help? And I say, no. No, no, absolutely, and that's, you know. I may, I may, I may be able to give, maybe I'll help with something like echinacea to go along with, you know, with your vet. To support them while so, they're yeah. having chemotherapy or whatever. But, but, but no, yeah. I, I would yeah. never go down that road. Um, the more contentious one comes from Kimberly. So hello, Kimberly. Um, and Kimberly said she uses herbal and homeopathic remedies with great success. And then she goes on to talk about the cost of um, normal medicines, which I suppose is a slightly different issue. And then, then we're talking about vaccinations. And this is a whole can of worms, really. But um, Kimberly is sort of quite anti-vaccinations by the sound of things. Um, and um, saying that her dogs and cats don't uh, you know, use alternatives. And, and also asking this question of why do people only have vaccinations every 10 years or 20 years, but we give them to dogs every year. And, um, my viewpoint on that is quite strong in that um, we, vaccinations are wonderful things. They've you know, got rid of so many really nasty diseases um, and any potential side effects they have are, are absolutely nothing compared to the wonders yeah. that they do to protect our animals. So we really should be, the, you know, the, we should be vaccinating our animals and that herbal, homeopathic, alternatives just, just don't work, they're, they're not an equivalent to vaccination. In terms of why we do vaccinations more frequently, it's all down to the evidence of particular different vaccinations and different animals. So what works in a person um, may not be the same in a dog. We can do research about how long these vaccines last and different vaccines will last different lengths of time. So a dead vaccine is not going to last as long as an inactivated live vaccine. So different diseases um, need different frequencies of vaccination. And what we're doing nowadays in the veterinary profession is actually looking at the evidence and saying, well, actually, we don't need to do parvovirus distemper um, hepatitis vaccinations every year. We'll do those every three years. But leptospirosis only lasts for, we can only guarantee it for a year. It's a really serious disease. It's really important to do that every year. So I think there's a lot of good evidence for why we vaccinate the regime we do. And varying from that is not only putting your own animals at risk, but it's putting the whole population of animals at risk because of this herd um, immunity phenomenon where yeah. if the level of vaccination in the population drops down to a certain level, then vac the, the diseases become more prevalent. So, um, sorry to be ranting on about no, that. But it, but it's it, true, but also, in it, it, again, it's another moderate approach. Some things work, so why not use them? Exactly. It, it yeah. doesn't matter yeah. if they're and conventional and, 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 yeah, or natural, and, if they work. Exactly, if they work and if they're safe, yeah. which, you know, vaccinations are definitely safe. I mean, you know, there's some reactions, but the risk about, you know, certainly with cat vaccinations, where there's the most uh, worry, I think, about them being linked to skin tumours. I mean, the risk is incredibly low. It's, you know, one in a hundred thousand or whatever it might be, which is far lower than the risk of catching ca feline leukaemia if you're yeah. an unvaccinated cat. So, um, you know, you have to look at the evidence on those kind of things. Um, uh, and Linda has come up uh, on the same a point in saying that again lots of us do not recommend yearly boosters um, and she really making that that same point really um, both her um, and Kimberly talk about raw diets which I guess we're straying off the point slightly here um, um, and finally uh, Amanda has sort of said about uh, again using homeopathic natural remedies on my child since he was born I mean personally in his own my personal opinion I don't have any time for homeopathy I don't I don't think it does anything and I think I've, um, you know, I've used it occasionally myself with mixed. Re I think mixed I think you can't really draw an opinion on whether it works no, you or not is irrelevant really because it might just be coincidental. You have to look at the evidence, and there is no scientific evidence that it's any more than a placebo effect. Or uh, so I just think you know I'm driven by what the evidence is and um, what we know works, and I don't want to waste people's time and money using something that... No, and it's something I no used to stock and something I did quite a lot of research into. And the feedback I had from my customers was, is, it doesn't work for us. 
Uh, yeah. And, and so it's, it's purely from that with, point of with, view, it's just pointless. With things like itchy dogs, it's so subjective because you can have an itchy dog and then I could give a conventional medicine or homeopathy and it might get better, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's a causal link. No. It might have been going to get better anyway. It might be coincidental. So it's, uh, it's very hard. And it's very hard sometimes. Has there been a little improvement in your dog? And, yeah. Um, so it's, it's really hard. But I guess coming back to my itchy dog and what you're doing, you're, you're sort of saying, well, we'll we'll look at all of these options, put it all together, and hopefully the mix is going to make your dog less itchy. Quite often I'll get an email that says, my dog has itchy ears, can you recommend something? And I can't, I have to, I usually say, what's your phone number? And we have a conversation. What are you feeding your dog? Is there, is there a reason it could be anxious at the moment? It could be all sorts of things. Has, the, you know, has their diet changed? Is their exercise changed? What's going on? And, and until you've had that conversation, you really can't recommend anything. No, you know, no so you've got, to, you've got to, I really understand the pet and understand yeah. their problem. So, um, good, well, we're pretty much out of time. Um, so, thank you so much for coming in. And, and just um, to let people know what to find out more, the website address is? It's myitchydog.co.uk. Um, so, thoroughly recommended for advice on, on itchy dogs. And we've got that up on the screen, I think. Um, and, you know, it's an interesting debate. So, we can carry this on on Facebook and, you know, would yeah, you for sure. mind joining into our debate and, you know, adding your two pen of him. Um, so, thank you very much, Kate. Thanks um, for having me lovely on. Lovely to see you.